Hi there, I'm Adam with Orchid Web, and today I'll be showing you how to make living wall art frames. First, let's start with the parts. Obviously, you'll need a picture frame for this, as well as some wire mesh cut to size to the picture frame. Um, and the same thing for a plastic corrugated board a hearty amount of preserved and dyed green sheet moss for decoration. You can find these materials at your local hardware store and the sheet moss you can find online. Additionally, you'll want to have some fishing line, ours is colored green, a staple gun for attaching the wire mesh to the picture frame, some spray adhesive for attaching the sphagnum preserved moss, to the wire mesh, scissors or shears uh, for you cutting the fishing line, and some pliers to help manipulate the fishing line, as well as the wire mesh, sometimes that needs some bending. The plants that we've selected for our living art frame today. First, Lelia Diana is a miniature Brazilian orchid that produces beautiful purple flowers. Two, air plants from the genus Tillandsia. This is Tillandsia bergeri, extremely fast growing, great uh, plant to have at home easy to grow. And another easy to grow Tillandsia is Tillandsia incarnata. Uh, Bergeri has a much more lime bright green and incarnata is covered with silvery hairs that lend its silver color. All right, now let's put it all together. We're going to start by taking our wire mesh that we've cut to size, place it on the back of the picture frame such that the edges are not poking out. You're gonna line it up with your staple gun and you're going to want to press down and add an angle so that the staple goes around the wire mesh. If you have staples that are sticking out too far, this one's all right, but if you do, you can take a hammer and gently tap that in if you'd like. We're going to continue on this side. Now that we've stapled the wire mesh to the top of the frame, you might notice that our wire mesh comes up just a little bit short. This happens to you at home, it's no problem. We're gonna end up tying the plastic corrugated board to the back, which will keep the wire mesh in place. Otherwise, if you cut your plastic corrugated board wide enough as well, you can also use your staple gun to attach it that way. So before we add the plastic corrugated board, we're going to attach our plants while we have our wire mesh free and easy to access. I'm going to start with our largest plant, Lelia Diana. It's going to be centered at the top. I'll rotate this so that you can see. And the way I'm envisioning this is to arrange my plants sort of in a triangle formation. So Tillandsia bergeri in this corner and Tillandsia incarnata coming out like this. So I'll remove Lelia Diana from its pot. Depending on the size of the plant that you have at home, you're gonna to wanna to do something like this ahead of time to make sure that it's the appropriate size. Um, you don't want to have a plant that's coming out of too big of a pot and hangs too far out and away from your frame, especially for a frame that's not as deep such as this one. In this case, I'll be able to pull some of this sphagnum away and flatten out this, this plant's medium. And later, I'll wrap around with the dyed sphagnum, and this will kind of be the protruding outward um, highlighting plant of this piece. So right now I'm gently going around the plant's roots and removing any excess sphagnum. So I want to arrange my plant like this, and that seems to be good. I can even come back in some of these exposed roots, I can wrap them back up, make sure I'm reusing my materials. Now, let's wire that in. So I'm coming up underneath, feeding the fishing line through the wire mesh. And I'll go between these leaves. And it's good to use excess fishing line here 
so that you don't come up short. Feed it back through on the other side. Careful not to let your plant tip over. All right. So I'm using this pot to lift the wire mesh up a little bit from the table, make it easier for myself. And if it's kind of hard to see right now, all I'm doing is feeding the fishing line around the plant and then tying knots against the wire mesh. And if this looks messy right now, don't worry about it. What you're really going for is making sure you're putting enough fishing line in there to secure the plant. Later on, your decorative sheet moss will cover any gaps and any messy sphagnum that may have occurred along the way. So here I'm using the pliers to help grab the string since there's a lot of moving pieces at this step. Now that I've got my knot ready, I can pull freely. Kind of push the knot down so it's tight against the mesh. So now that we have this all tied on, here's what it looks like from the back. And as you can see, all I did was pull the lines through the grid, tie the knots, and cut off the excess. Next up, we're going to work with our Tillandsias. These are easier to work with because you don't have a root system that you have to tie into place. So let's get started. If you're having trouble putting the fishing line around the plant while it's on there, with Tillandsia bird dry, it's small enough where we can put the fishing line through first, once we have it all measured out, and then attach our fishing line. And if you find that you have to redo the tying of a certain plant a couple of times, don't worry about it, that's perfectly normal. Just remember that a process like this takes a little bit of patience, especially if you are working hard on not bringing any damage to your plants. Trust me, putting in the patience and the time from the start will lead to a much better finished product. So now we have our three plants. They're a little bit loose, don't worry. We'll position them with the sphagnum. That's what it looks like from the front. That's what it looks like from the back. Now we're ready to add our plastic corrugated board that's been obviously cut to size. And like I said, you can either staple it or you can poke holes and tie the corrugated board on from the back. So everything that you've just watched, keep in mind if you have your own materials at home that you want to substitute for what we've used, you can always get creative and make this as much your own as you'd like. So now we have our three plants, they're tied in so they're not falling off. Next, we're going to add the sphagnum moss as well as position our plants the way that we want them to be. Now, we're going to use our spray adhesive. It's good to first place some adhesive on the wire mesh and then add some to the sphagnum that you will be using. So we'll start up here. Make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area. So now before I attach this, I just want to make sure I like how it's going to look wrapped around this Lelia Diana. Yeah, that'll look nice. So no concerns for the plants in terms of using this adhesive. They will still be able to grow just fine. And if you have sensitive skin, not a bad idea to throw some gloves on before you start working with this adhesive. As I'm going down, I'm also filling in the pockets, making sure I'm happy with how my section is done before moving on to the next. For this plant, I think I'm going to want to wrap it 
like this, give it a little basket, and then I'll pull it back and have the Tillandsia rest back on the sphagnum like that. Now I'm placing the finishing touches around the corner of this last Tillandsia. You can always add a little bit more spray adhesive. Make sure everything sticks in nice and well. So this is our finished product. I think it looks pretty great. Hopefully yours at home looks just, just as good or better. And now in terms of hanging these plants, well, there's a couple options. You could go to your local craft store and pick up some pins with loops, tie a string, hang it that way. Otherwise, sometimes your wire mesh might have loops on the top margin and you could hang uh, your frame from those loops as well. I wanted to show you a bigger example of a living wall art frame. This one features some decorative wood pieces as well and larger Tillandsia specimens. To take care of these living wall art pieces, for the Tillandsias, all that you would have to do is mist them a couple of times a week. And as for the orchids, it would be good to follow their caretaking strategies. But with ease, you should be able to feel the sphagnum underneath the decorative moss and see just how damp or dry your plant is becoming and water slash mist it accordingly. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video helps you make your very own living wall art piece that you can hang at your home and show off to your friends. Happy growing. <laughs>